Hi, this is Tom Bauer. I am with a company called Emview Botanicals, and I am the managing partner of the company, and you are listening to Pharmacy Podcast. I'm dubious about marijuana, and states I get, can pass whatever laws they choose, but I'm not sure we're going to be a better, healthier nation than if uh, we have uh, marijuana being sold at every corner grocery store. Hey, man. What? Then this shit, man. Mostly Maui Wowie, man. Yeah. These high school boys and girls are having a hop at the local soda fountain. Innocently, they dance. Innocent of a new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. You are listening to The Medical Podcast, a podcast publication, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. The Medical Podcast is dedicated to pharmacists, healthcare professionals, and is devoted to delivering accurate, timely, cutting-edge information about medical marijuana. We will bring you the most up-to-date scientific, political, regulatory, financial, and interesting information not available on any other podcast program. Not since Silicon Valley and the technology boom have we seen the likes of any other industry that has grown this fast over a relatively short period of time. The medical marijuana industry is projected to hit the 30 billion mark in the next five years. The medical cannabis industry has the potential of helping billions of people around the globe. But at a significant social, economical, and political cost. Our goal is to answer some of your questions, plus heighten, enlighten, confuse, and frustrate you all at the same time. So fasten your seatbelts, keep your eyes on the road, and get ready for some fun. And now, here's your host, registered pharmacist, life student, and medical cannabis professional, Joseph Friedman. Hey, Pharmacy Podcast Nation, this is The Medical Podcast. Normally, you hear Joseph Friedman, who is our host. However, with schedules and how much information that we're uh, getting and, and how many dynamic people in our industry, we want to be able to mix up different interviews, different subject matter experts. I met a guy who is very impressive in what he has going on in the world of uh, medical cannabis, um, more so CBD oil, the differences that we're going to learn today between that, hemp, medical cannabis, and research and other things that I have questions about. want to give a shout out to Nick uh, with um, the SweetRx team. Uh, just thank you so much for being plugged into the bigger universe of the business of pharmacy and the importance um, of, of getting us good information. That team has always been very good with social media. It's one thing to talk about yourself, but it's another thing to really give good content about the industry overall, which we're pretty excited about. Want to welcome Tom Bauer to the show. Tom, welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate it. Nice to be here. So, as I said in the beginning, and I'm sure you get this all the time, Tom, let's start out with a little bit about your background in Imbu Botanicals and what you guys are doing. And then I have some questions just to kind of set the stage for the pharmacists that are listening who really want to understand some differences in what is the overarching theme of medical cannabis and CBD oil and other things that are kind of plugged into that. Sure, absolutely. So my background is mostly in the medical and medical products area. I spent about uh, 25 years in that particular industry. Um, I developed a bunch of products that were really much more uh, surgery and and hospital related, uh, including outsourcing of the surgical reprocessing, uh, instrument reprocessing for hospitals. Um, Had uh, several companies, took one of them public, um, and really was, have been always fascinated with the whole area of, uh, of healthcare. Um, worked for companies like uh, American Hospital Supply when it was still in business, uh, worked for Pfizer for a number of years. Um, so a pretty diverse background in that area, but uh, most of my time was spent uh, really kind of as a, as a medical entrepreneur, if you will. Um, got involved really uh, quite accidentally uh, in this whole area of, uh, of CBD. Um, I was really looking for the ability to develop products that would help my neuropathy. I, I've suffered from neuropathy for 
um, a number of years, and I'm sure most of your listeners know what that is, but if somebody doesn't, if you ever watch those commercials where they talk about diabetic nerve pain on TV, um, I don't have diabetes, but I've got, uh, I've taken uh, ethical pharmaceuticals throughout the years that have caused very similar reactions and basically destroyed the nerves and was introduced to uh, one of my business partners, quite by accident as well, but he was uh, doing some research for us and, and uh, you know, found this guy up in Oregon who was literally manufacturing a CBD product uh, lotion uh, in his kitchen, of all places, um, out of marijuana. And he sent it down to me and, and uh, he said, you know, just try this, Tom, and see what you think. You know, sometimes it, uh, it's been known to help neuropathy. And I put it on my feet and I went, oh my gosh, this feels so much better. And with that, um, I was starting to be a, a firm, committed person to the whole idea of, of what uh, CBD can do. Uh, and we went out and started the company of Botanicals. I used my development expertise to really develop a whole line of products for the company. Um, and kind of as you say, the, the rest is history. We have been a company uh, in, in business now for about two and a half years. We sold our product, our first product, in September of 2016. And uh, uh, no pun intended, but we're kind of growing like a weed. <laughs> um, you know, we we really uh, you know for those folks who who aren't uh, uh, familiar with uh, CBD, um, it's uh, it's basically it's an abbreviation for uh, cannabidiol or cannabidiol, depending how you want to pronounce it. Uh, but it is one of uh, the uh, cannabinoids that is found of the hundred or so cannabinoids that is found in uh, both marijuana as well as industrial hemp. Our products all come from industrial hemp. Uh, all of it's grown in Colorado. We grow at high altitudes at 7,600 feet for absolutely the, the best possible sunlight conditions. All of our product is processed under the auspices of the Colorado Department of Agriculture under really the most stringent conditions. And we produce an extensive line of premium CBD products, including tinctures, capsules, uh, topical lotions and salves, beauty products, including uh, eye cream and face cream, as well as lip balms. Um, and all these are available in multiple strengths for both people as well as pets. Um, all of our premium uh, Colorado products are, are non-GMO, they're cruelty-free, vegan, and, and they contain you know, no added flavorings or sugars of any kind. So I'm always interested in the inception of, of companies and startups and your uh, no um, – you're, you're not new to startups because you've already done this before. And as yeah. you said, you took, a, you took a company public. But tell me about the name, Imbu Botanicals. Tell me yeah. about the meaning behind that. Yeah. Imbu, of course, is a word that means to inspire or permeate with a feeling or quality. Um, you know, it, it's kind of to permeate or saturate, diffuse, if you will, uh, bathe or drench or steep. You know, those are all synonyms for, for Imbu. Um, and, you know, it, it seemed to make a great deal of sense with this particular product. You know, we wanted to stay away from something that would associate us with marijuana. You know, we wanted to really to be separate. So we wanted to come up with a name that really talked about what the product does. And frankly, I think the word in view really fits with what our product does. But more interestingly, it was one of my mother's favorite words, and, <laughs> and she used it extensively. So as a child, I grew up hearing it continually. And uh, when we were ready to, to name the company, it was one of those words that came to mind. And I thought, wow, this might work. So that's how we came up with the name. That is really cool that there's a personal side to this. There is. You, yeah. You know, yeah, my mom would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> there's an overarching category that we have to fit all of this into. And there's lawmakers out there clinicians, physicians, nurses, uh, pharmacists, and they're in this space talking to patients. Patients have questions, and sometimes these medical providers and professionals don't actually know the real answers because they just don't have a background in it or they haven't taken the time to research it. Right. So let's break this down. You mentioned Imbu uses hemp, but you have to break that down for us and tell our audience the difference between hemp, marijuana, Yep. Uh, and, and all of the others and the fact that you guys are in, a, are in a specific category. Sure. You know, I always tell people they don't know what CBD is. I always say, well, are you familiar with medical marijuana? And of course, they all say yes. And I always say, you know, well, we all know that medical marijuana can provide some pretty impressive medical benefits. And of course, they'll agree with that. And I said, well, think of this as medical marijuana without the high or 
as some people would say, without the fun. But, but really what it does is basically um, it's a product that's refined from industrial hemp. What is industrial hemp? It is cannabis sativa. It is the same plant, the same genus of plant that marijuana is. The difference is the amount of THC, or basically the, the, the cannabinoid that makes you high, right? The amount of THC available in the plant. Um, the industrial hemp in the United States has to be grown, has to be grown at 0.3% or 0.3% of THC by dry weight. Now, to put that in perspective, if you look at uh, marijuana plants that are grown in Colorado, for distribution for THC, they contain about 30% THC by dry weight or 100 times more than what the hemp plant will contain. Okay? Got it. But it's the same plant. So what, what, what really is only adjusted is the amount of THC that appears in that particular plant. That's it. And then tell me the difference of administration in the world of CBD. I've heard oils in consumption and maybe like oatmeal or cereals. I've heard about topicals, obviously your uh, story about your, your own um, usage uh, mm -hmm. would use that as a topical. So tell me about the, the administration of it. Sure. Absolutely. The, the, the basically the, the old style uh, of uh, administration or ingestion um, was, it was called a tincture. You know, and tinctures have been around for hundreds of years. Um, if you go back uh, to the turn of the century, not this century, but the last century, um, when it went to the 1900s, uh, you could walk into, you know, any um, uh, apothecary or pharmacy in the United States and you would find tinctures of hemp uh, or tinctures of marijuana or basically the same kind of thing that, that's available today. Those were a widespread uh, product that was used to control pain and epilepsy and all the things that we say the product has uh, great benefits today. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, pharmacies have been involved in this area uh, in the past for, for a long time and only stopped doing it when it became illegal. Okay? But up until that point, it was, it was a very common thing. Tinctures are basically um, a, a, a liquid extract of the product um, that is basically mixed with, uh, you know, some kind of carrier or alcohol or something along that lines. Um, you know, in our case, uh, we use for our tinctures, uh, a whole different process than most people do. Uh, most tinctures are made using a, uh, an, an MCT, um, or basically a, quite some medium chain, uh, oil like, uh, coconut oil. And the reason that they do that is because when you have an oil, which is what you're extracting from the hemp plant for the CBD, uh, it mixes easily with another oil and it's very easy uh, to basically produce it. The difficulty with it is, aside from the issues that you have with, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, a lot of people now saying that uh, uh, coconut oil really is not a terribly good oil to begin with uh, from a health standpoint, but beyond that, there's an issue as it relates uh, to the fact that it doesn't taste very good. Um, so you have to mix stabilizers in there. You got to mix uh, flavorings in there. You got to do all that kind of stuff. We don't. We use a basically a vegetable glycerin that comes from pygmy palm fruit. Uh, it's sweet by nature. Um, and we mix that with our CBD oil and that's it. Now, when we started this, we had problems being able to, to mix the two together. So we had to invent all new processing systems to do that. But what we do now is we have this product that remains mixed. Uh, it's homogenized. Um, but the interesting thing is because we're mixing it with a sugar, it literally, the CBD molecule literally bonds to the sugar molecule um, and creates a scenario where when you ingest it, it, because it's a sugar, it's one of the first things that the body ingests. Uh, basically digest. Uh, if you to use it as an oil, of course, fats and oils uh, are literally the last thing. So we believe that we get significantly faster absorption because of how our product is manufactured. Beyond that, we only have you know two ingredients, uh, and then we have a situation uh, where, frankly, it tastes good and people love our product. So that's uh, you know we have we we decided obviously when we launched the, the company 
that we had to have a product that was similar to what uh, had been, you know, in, in uh, apothecaries and pharmacies for uh, a long period of time. But also, that's really what the, the market was at that point. We were one of the first folks to market with a capsule. And, you know, we believed a capsule was, well, I did anyway, was a much simpler way <laughs> of just taking your, your CBD. So we offer that as an alternative to the whole area of, of tinctures. Um, our capsules are, again, different. Most of the folks who have now launched capsules uh, have done that, you know, with, a, you know, basically a soft gel. Uh, and you look at them, they look like the kind of the, um, uh, the fish oil capsules that you get, right? Okay. Uh, the problem with those is that they're clear. So sunlight, light can damage it because it filters through that, that clear covering, that clear, um, you know, gelatin capsule that it's in. Uh, and, you know, we believe that's a problem for longevity as it relates to the capsules. We went a different route. We use a vegan capsule that is colored green with natural chlorophyll, which protects the internal um, makings, if you will, of the capsule. There are only, again, two ingredients. We use our CBD oil, and then we use a, a basically um, a, a carrier oil in there, uh, which is hemp seed oil which is made from the hemp seeds that come from the hemp plants that we grow. Of course, that's all organic as well. And then, you know, then you have things like um, uh, topicals and, and uh, you know, lotions and salves. And, and those are ones I really developed to help my neuropathy. And, and frankly, they do a terrific job. Uh, but we have customers using them for things like um, uh, psoriasis and eczema. They do a fantastic job with that. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a great ability to kind of offer for a lot of patients, not just, you know, alternatives in terms uh, of treatment, but we're also big believers in concomitant therapy. In other words, using two products, you know, simultaneously. So, for instance, I take a 10 milligram capsule in the morning and I use the stab at night and the lotion in the morning on my feet. And two years later, I have virtually no neuropathy. And it was a point where literally they'd said, Tom, there's nothing we can do for you. You've gone through all the drugs. None of them are working on anymore for you. Happy to put you on pain pills for the rest of your life, but that's the only option we have. So to be in a position where I now feel like, you know, my gosh, I, I, <laughs> I can function during the day is, uh, is nothing less than a miracle for me. And a lot of our, our customers will say the same thing about the situations they have. So that's really interesting, kind of sets the stage for my next question, which is, you know, what, what exactly are the benefits? What disease states is this moving into faster than others? What do you see coming on the horizon? Sure. That's a, it's a great question. You know, the, 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 the uses of this are, <laughs> are almost virtually unlimited. You know, I always tell customers, look, if you have questions, um, you know, go out there and simply uh, Google that say, you know, CBD and epilepsy, CBD, you know, and neuropathy, you know, CBD and anxiety. And you pull up all these articles. Some of them are just, uh, you know, uh, um, not terribly scholarly, but there are a bunch of scholarly articles as well that kind of go through uh, the, the value of this. Uh, research has been somewhat hampered, as you know, not only with CBD, but also, of course, with, with any uh, cannabis plant because it's because of its legality. And, you know, the, the, uh, the government has clamped down on that. It's been difficult to do it. So probably would be a lot more research if it was legal. It hasn't been. Uh, but but uh, it, it's just uh, the, 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 the World Wide Web is filled with uh, not only stories, but great research articles that uh, kind of go through all these different products, uh, uh, the different cannabinoids and, and what they can do. Uh, but it, it's, um, it, it, it's absolutely... Um, interesting, you know, as, a, as augmentation for cancer, etc. Now, the interesting thing is, of course, you know, as a, as a company, because it's not gone through the FDA drug process, we can't make claims about the product and we don't, which is one of the reasons why, you know, we've chosen the whole area of the independent pharmacy market as our main point of distribution. Because the great thing about independent uh, pharmacists is they're healthcare professionals and they can make the recommendations and claims that we can't because of their status of being a healthcare professional. Uh, so we believe that this is a critical place for people to get the kind of information that they need to make the right selection as it relates to their product of choice. 
we provide reference manuals and reference charts, and we're here to help uh, pharmacists. I talk to pharmacists all day long uh, about uh, you know certain situations they have, but we really want to make sure that there's a there's a person, a trusted healthcare professional that these people can go to to get the kind of answers that they need about CVD. Does that make sense? It does. It it definitely does. And I see how the the pharmacist is transforming to be much more consultative and from their knowledge, collective knowledge, as well as progression in what they're learning, they're able to apply where CBD fits. So that's why I asked a specific disease state as an example, because the, the, the realm of senior care, the yeah. realm of veterinarian pharmacy, Mm-hmm. The, the realm of community and, and comorbidity where some uh, patients suffering with uh, diabetes and hypertension and some other thing. But I think that CBD, as you know very well, can fit into supplementing and enhancing an entire um, therapy. And I feel that the future is in the hands of the pharmacist if they're aggressive enough to really understand that it fits in so many different chronic disease states. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we always tell pharmacists, look, we, we, you know, we want you to be the, 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 the point of contact for the information and as well as the sales point. Um, you know, people shouldn't be going down to their, you know, their, their corner uh, 7-Eleven and trying to find CBD products. <laughs> just, not, right. just not where you want to buy them, right? Absolutely. Yep. The same with over-the-counter. If you and you're trying to make these medical decisions yourself, it's not a good idea when you're questioning that. So being able to walk up to the counter and say, hey, I have a question for the pharmacist. Um, You know, I'm suffering from A, B, C, D. And oh, by the way, does CBD make sense for me? Now you have this clinician that comes from under around the counter and starts to actually counsel you. And I think that's why medical cannabis and CBD and hemp that in the hands of the pharmacist, I think it's going to be really powerful. Correct. Absolutely. And, and, you know, frankly, you know, I'm sure a lot of pharmacists look at the, you know, at the marijuana market and say, boy, it would, you know, be great if I could get into that. Uh, the problem is because of how marijuana is, uh, is um, the, the, the restrictions legally that you place on marijuana state by state, etc. It's virtually impossible for a pharmacist to get into that particular market and certainly not carry it in the store. It's just not going to work. Uh, but this product they can get into uh, and they can provide the vast majority of the benefits because, you know, ours, our product um, is full spectrum. And, and um, by, by that definition, okay, I'll just take a second to explain that, is that means what we do is we're very careful about how we extract it. We use a kind of proprietary method in terms of extraction. We only use ethanol. We don't use CO2. Um, we basically extract in the old standard way. Um, if some of your listeners are familiar with RSO or Rick Simpson oil, um, which was set the standard for extraction years ago, um, uh, Mr. Simpson did not use um, uh, CO2. He basically went back to uh, an old style of extraction using ethanol, actually used uh, grain alcohol that he bought in a, in a, in a, um, uh, in a liquor store. To, to make the first process. So what he found is that's a great way to do it because you end up protecting the cannabinoids and you get a great product out the other end. We do the same thing, uh, except we've added to it. Uh, we use far less pressure um, and, uh, and a much colder ethanol in, in the process. It's well below zero in terms of the temperature. Uh, but what we get uh, is basically a, a full spectrum product. There is minute amounts of THC. It's far below the 0.3% that's required by law, but there's enough to basically kind of, uh, you know, help activate the the endocannabinoid system. Um, Scientists will tell you that generally small amounts, some tiny amount of THC is generally required to get the full activation. It's almost the key that unlocks the the endocannabinoid system. Um, So ours contain a small amount of THC, nothing that will affect you or get you high, but it contains enough to, to kind of get that process started. And it contains all the other cannabinoids as well. Um, so, you know, virtually the only thing that you're missing from a health perspective with a full spectrum oil like ours um, is basically getting high. <laughs> that makes sense. It does. So, you know, so it, allows, it allows these pharmacists 
to get into the market to provide the kind of expertise that they can provide to help their customers get the kind of relief and really all they're not giving the customers is the chance to go say get high. So. so your inroads to the world of independent community pharmacy, that's exciting to me because I'm always looking out uh, for what can help a, a community pharmacist provide additional um, medical services to their community, but make some money along the way, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. So kind of tell us about your inroads and in, in success in independent pharmacy. Share a couple of your success stories. Sure, absolutely. Um, we, we, are, um, we, we looked at this market as really, as I said, the, the a, a extremely good distribution uh, area for us because of the fact that you're now linking it with professionals who know what they're talking about. And we felt that was absolutely critical. Um, you know, we have a few dispensaries, uh, especially in, in Arizona, which are medical model where, you know, they're well-trained and, and, and they certainly have some expertise in terms of providing information to the customer, but it's more limited because you have to have a marijuana card to go in. Um, and, but we recognize that really this, this ability to have somebody who really understands it, like a pharmacist, was really the way to go. So that's really been our focus. And, you know, we've grown from, you know, virtually none to, you know, well over 100 pharmacies, maybe well over 150 pharmacies by now uh, across the country. And we just continue to expand rapidly. Uh, and, and most of our expansion is not because we're marketing to pharmacies. It's really the existing customers out there uh, that we have that are talking to, you know, their friends and associates saying, you know, this is an area you ought to consider getting into if you're not. And, you know, it's a great company and uh, give them a call. So that's kind of how we're growing. It's, it's basically word of mouth. Um, but, you know, we've had, uh, you know, an extreme amount of success with, with our, our customers. Um, you know, we have many stores that are selling, um, you know, several thousand dollars worth of, of a, a product on a monthly basis, buying actually been buying several thousand dollars from us on a monthly basis. Um, you know, one of the major uh, success stories is a pharmacy uh, in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, and when uh, Indiana basically completely legalized CBD across the board, um, you know, they were well poised to take advantage of it and they just do a, a ton of business. Uh, we have some pharmacies, um, in uh, in New Jersey that just do a terrific job. One of them um, actually does seminars uh, every few months uh, where one of our, our other partners and vice president goes in to, to actually make the presentation. Um, and that just helps get the community even more excited about having the availability of these products. And frankly, those guys are just, you know, burning through inventory like you can't believe. That's great to hear. So you mentioned, which makes me think of another profit center, uh, catering towards pet lovers. I have three dogs and mm -hmm. I'm all into, um, you know, their uh, well-being and health. And I've always wondered about CBD. So how does that play into um, community pharmacy and independent pharmacy? Um, well, it, it, people, again, would love to have the ability to find these kinds of products to take care of their pets. You know, we have pet products for, uh, for dogs, cats, uh, even horses, and, and probably they're, they're not going to walk into their, their pharmacy to, to buy horse supplies, uh, but, but it's there for those people um, as well. Uh, but probably more focused on, on cats and dogs would be my guess for, for independent pharmacies. But, you know, even compounding pharmacies, especially where, you know, they're, they're putting together products for veterinarians. There's a, there's, we've seen kind of a, an uptick in that particular business. But the ability to go in and find pet products in your, in your independent neighborhood pharmacy, you know, is a, is a great uh, advantage. And again, having somebody who is uh, obviously knowledgeable, completely knowledgeable uh, in this area, as well as, you know, the pharmaceutical world, uh, what, what uh, you know, better place to distribute these products in those kinds of pharmacies. Um, for, you know, for benefit, you know, what, uh, what we've seen in, in, the, in the veterinary world um, is, you know, it, it's, it's wonderful for um, dogs, for instance, that are having anxiety, and, and there's a lot of dogs that have that. Um, it's great for dogs that, uh, 
um, that are having mobility issues. Um, it, uh, it, again, it works in the same kind of manner uh, for seizures and epilepsy. Um, it, uh, it, it's great from a standpoint of, a, of a helping uh, as an augmentation uh, in, in cancer treatment. I'll, I'll give you a story there. Um, you know, it doesn't cure cancer, um, in, in, at least in, in canines, um, but we've seen that it can prolong life. And, and give you the first dog that we used it on was actually one of my dogs. Um, it, it got a 10-year-old uh, female Doberman that was diagnosed with osteosarcoma. And when she was diagnosed, the vet said, you know, Tom, you have, you know, probably a few weeks, no more than a month. Uh, she said, we can extend that if we amputate the leg and, uh, and put the dog on chemo. And I said, well, how much time can we get then? And she said, well, maybe four or five months. And I, I just couldn't see putting Maggie through that kind of scenario, losing her leg and all that stuff for a few more months. So I said, you know, we're just not going to do that. And, and I'm going to give my dog CBD and see what happens. He got eight months out of her and the vet was absolutely blown away. She was just like, I, 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 I can't understand how this can happen. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and, and she was far more comfortable than if we resorted to normal therapy. Um, and uh, literally, she was so impressed, she actually invested in the company. Um, but um, but it's, it's those kinds of, and again, that's, you know, that, that's a, um, anecdotal more than anything, but it's the kind of thing that, that we see as, uh, you know, areas for further research, et cetera. But, uh, you know, clearly um, it, it's, uh, it's heartening when you see it happen uh, with your own pet. So I've been paying attention to different states that are coming out with different policies and mm -hmm. every state's a little bit different. Um, California, Oregon, Colorado, all um, allowing what even recreational is that correct? On the on the on the marijuana side, correct. Okay. And you know the the interesting thing is that those states have broken off um, hemp uh, and industrial hemp and removed it from the definition of marijuana, so it's by itself. Uh, and some have done a great job in terms of of formulating how it then can be marketed and sold, and some like California have not. Um, but there is a, you know, for most states out there, uh, the ability to, for a pharmacy to carry this is, is, is something that they can do. Um, but there's something more interesting on the horizon here I, I, this month. Um, the, the, there is a part of the farm bill for 2018 where they've attached literally what they call the hemp farm bill of 2018 that would allow for basically total 100% um, deregulation of, uh, uh, of any uh, hemp and CBD products out there. Um, it was uh, written and sponsored by uh, Senator Mitch McConnell from Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky is in virtually in, it was one of the primary uh, uh, hemp growers for, for literally uh, you know, decades. Um, and, uh, and really believe this, this is a huge cash crop for them, especially as, uh, the, uh, the amount of, of, uh, tobacco goes down in that particular state. So they're very into this product. They really want, want this to go through. Um, the, the Senate passed that in the language in their farm bill, which passed at, uh, 87 to 11. And the, uh, the house did not have that ledger, that, that language in its bill that it passed. So when you have... House and Senate with different bills. They meet in conference committee. They're meeting now. Uh, the idea is to get that passed before the current farm bill expires, which is at the end of the month. So we may see a huge kickoff towards full, complete legalization federally across the board, not just state, uh, that allow you know essentially any pharmacy anywhere to carry it. And at that point, they really want to get on the bad wagon because. Um, if they don't, you know, their customers are going to be able to buy it somewhere else. And that's not what uh, they want. And certainly not what we want either. We want, uh, you know, this to be continued on with uh, the kinds of professionals that we have it in their hands now.
Yeah, and then there's also a tax revenue opportunity for the state as well to Absolutely. kind of capitalize right. on. So I right. hope this is coming full circle. Um, looking forward to continuing to get updates. I'd like to invite you back on to the medical podcast and even getting on a conversation with Joe Friedman and what he's doing in the state of Illinois. But this kind of stuff is exciting, Tom, and very much appreciate you being here. Likewise, Todd. Thank you so much for having me. I, I truly appreciate being able to talk to your listeners and, and I hope that uh, they look at our products. If you want to learn more, um, just simply go to www.imbuebotanicals.com. That's I-M-B-U-E botanicals.com. Thank you so much, Tom. You were with um, Imbu Botanicals, Tom Bauer. Once again, I-M-B-U-E botanicals.com. The uh, link will be in the show notes and we will look forward to hearing more from you. Great. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. I'll Thanks for listening to the medical podcast, part of the pharmacy podcast network. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, please help us by sharing the show on your LinkedIn, Twitter, and other social media networks. If you have healthcare-oriented questions or are a pharmacist or healthcare professional and want to learn more about medical cannabis, please reach out to our team by email. Send your message to medicalpodcast at gmail.com. The medical podcast should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever, including but not limited to establishing standard of care or as a basis for expert witness testimony. No guarantee is given regarding the accuracy of any statements or opinions made on the podcast. Seek all medical advice and or treatment from a certified registered licensed physician and or pharmacist. This is not legal advice. Seek out a knowledgeable lawyer about the subject. The medical podcast is for general information purposes to generate meaningful conversations about medical marijuana and is not an authority on the subject from a clinical or legal perspective.